So today's lesson in Foundations of Math 10 is 3.7, and what we're doing is we are multiplying using the uh, distributive property um, two polynomials. And the two polynomials, uh, they're going to, they're going to be at least binomials, probably greater. We've done the two binomials already. That's the FOIL method. So we're talking about, you know, with, you know, three plus terms, that sort of thing. You're going to see those now. Not, not too terribly difficult, really. If you, if you remember the distributive property of multiplying, that is the big thing here. So the distributive property, if you have something like this, and you're multiplying those two things, the distributive property says that you have to do the, this term outside by the first term. You have to multiply those to get 10h here. And then you have to multiply again by the next term that's separated by a positive plus or minus. So that would be 5h times negative 5h would give you negative 25h squared. That's the distributive property. And if you think back to the FOIL method of multiplying binomials, okay, two binomials, the FOIL method does the exact same thing. You start with the first term and you distribute so that you multiply by, multiply by each term in the second polynomial, right? And this, of course, is, you know, the, this is F, the first terms, and then outside terms. And then you move to the next term, and you do the same thing. You distribute. So the FOIL method, if you remember, is just distribution. There's the inside terms. There's the last terms we're multiplying. Okay? So this section is about extending this to polynomials that are greater than, you know, monomials. So that's a monomial, one term. Here's a binomial, two terms. So let's say we have something like this right here. Uh, let's say we have 2h plus 5 times h squared plus 3h minus 4. So there's a binomial by two terms times a trinomial, three terms. There's no fancy, you know, fancy name like FOIL or anything like that. We don't need that. All we have to understand is that we have to distribute. So each term has to be multiplied by the terms in the other polynomial. Okay? So I'm going to use color code here. We're always going to start with the first term, and we're going to multiply that by the first term over here. Then we're going to keep going down the line multiply, multiply, until we get to the last term. Then we move on to the next term. And we do the exact same thing. We multiply by the first, and by the second, and by the third, and so on. So if we finish this off, you see we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six terms in this next step. It's going to be a line of six terms because we're multiplying these two by these three. So what do we get? 2h times h squared is 2h cubed, the power of 3, right? Plus 6h squared is the next one. 2h times negative 4 is negative 8h. So that first term is all taken care of. We've multiplied it by every term in the second point. Well, now we move to the 5. So uh, 5 times h squared is plus 5h squared and plus 15h and minus 20. So with that distribution, here's your six terms. And then what we have to do after that is we have to gather all like terms and simplify. So do you remember dealing with like terms? Do you remember that? Like terms have the same variables and the same exponents on those variables. So if we take a look at 2h cubed, are there any like terms in this list right here that are like this? No. 
There's some that have the same uh, variable, but they don't have the exact same uh, exponent, right? It's the only one of its kind. So let's write this to h cubed. That just stays like that. What about h squared terms? Well, we have one here. We have another h squared term here. So now you can combine those into one. 6 plus 5 is 11. And 11 what? Well, we have 11 h squared. And finally, we have this h. h term has some uh, two we can do there. And is that a minus or a plus? Okay, yeah, I'll put this minus over here, right? So uh, negative 8 plus 15 is plus 7h. And then 20 is all by itself, so we just rewrite 20. And this is your answer. And remember, you're going to write your answer in decreasing order of the variable. So this is the variable to the power of 3. So that one's written first because it's the highest exponent you see on the variable here. Then 2, the, that term is written next, and then the h term is written next, and the constants at the end. So that's typically the way you would express your answer. Okay, so that's example 1, distributive property there. Any questions about that, or is that pretty easy? Pretty easy? Okay, so here's a couple examples I want you to try on your own. Let's go ahead and copy those, those out and uh, go ahead and show your work. And I will show you the completed answers in, uh, in just a little bit. Okay, let's walk through the process here. Uh, you see the answers below. Uh, the process would be this. I've color-coded this. Um, so when we take the first term, and we multiply it by all the other terms in the second polynomial, we get these three terms. When you take the second term, in green here, multiply it by all the other ones, you get these green terms. When you gather all the like terms, you should get this as your answer right here. For the second one, again, color-coded again, so the first term in green is multiplied by every term in the second polynomial, you get these three terms. Take this, the next term in red, multiply that by each of the terms in the second polynomial, you get this red line here. And then the term in blue, you multiply that across, and you get these ones. Like terms then, there's no like terms for the, the t to the fourth, but when I'm talking about the t cubed, here are some like terms that you can combine, so that gives you 24. The squareds are right here. You add those up, you get negative 25. And for the t terms, they're right here. 10, and then 3 is all by itself over here. Okay, so those are your two answers for your practice questions. So in this next example, this looks a little bit different, doesn't it? You've got some clear-cut multiplications here, like that we're familiar with, like right here. Binomial times a binomial. But then you've got this plus 3 in here. And really what this is, is the addition of another term that actually has three factors, okay? And so what we need to do is we need to take a look at this as a whole, and we need to remember our um, bed mass. Do you remember bed mass? Yeah, this is, this is the order of operations. So you would do brackets, any exponents, you'd evaluate those first, then you do your division multiplication, and then you do addition subtraction last. So what we have to do is we have to expand this multiplication right here, and then we'll do our addition next. So we got to focus on expanding. Expanding, of course, means multiplying everything out so that it's not in factored form. Right? It's sort of the opposite of factoring, is expanding it. Factoring is breaking it down into multiplication. And expanding is actually doing the multiplication to, to get a list of terms. So expanding means we multiply through. And simplify means we gather all like terms together. Okay, so let's do this one. Um, multiplying the binomials, you get 2c squared plus 10c minus 3c minus 15. All right, so that's the FOIL. And I, I think that FOIL is a little bit easier to, uh, uh, you know, a little bit easier to do maybe than thinking about distribution, but whatever. That's why FOIL is so popular, I guess. 
And then over here, we'll keep this plus. All right. And I would suggest using um, another set of brackets here because when this is subtraction, you have to make sure you remember to subtract all of the terms. And sometimes students forget that. So I would, I would suggest using another other square brackets or another large set of brackets. And then when we multiply, remember we multiply left to right just as we see it. So let's multiply these first. That gives us 3c minus 9. And now that's a binomial that I need to multiply by this. Okay. And you would be wise to show each step like this. And your next step of work you can do a couple things. We're going to multiply this out, but you can also combine some like terms right here. So 2c squared, what's 10 minus 3? Plus 7c minus 15. Okay. So yeah, so I'm just combining these like terms as I'm rewriting this next step out. And then this here, now I can simplify this, right? So plus what? Well, let's leave those big brackets there. This is going to be negative 9c squared uh, plus 3c plus 27c minus 9. Yep. Question? You good? Okay. Alright, so, so now notice that you know, you've used these brackets. This is a plus. So you are adding all of these terms. What I was, what I was saying, and don't, don't change this in your notes, but if this was a subtraction. Do you see how you got to make sure that you subtract each of these terms? That means you're going to have to change the signs. So these extra set of brackets here will prove to be important so you don't make any mistakes. But as it stands right now, this is uh, plus. So that means that the brackets really, now you can just drop the brackets. Okay? And you can erase them. You don't have to erase them. But when you're gathering like terms, you don't have to distribute any kind of um, negative signs. So this is a plus a negative 9c squared, and so on. Okay? Does that make sense? You get what I did there? Okay. So 2c squared minus 9c squared is what? Negative 7c squared, 2 minus 9. Do I have any like terms here with c? Oh, yeah, I have here and here. So let's combine all those three now. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 27 is plus 37c. Good. And then I have some constants that I should combine, right? Negative 15 minus 9 is negative 24. Yeah. Okay. So, um, that's your answer right there. That's the expanded and simplified form for that strange looking question. Okay, so here's the final example I'll get you to do in this lesson here. And again, a couple things just to be aware of, right? We have a trinomial times a binomial, so make sure you distribute each term. The other thing is this squared here. Please remember that that, really what that means is you have to multiply 3x plus 2y times itself, right? And please do not do this. This is a major, major boo-boo. Okay? This right here does not equal 9x squared plus 4y squared. Please don't do that. Okay? For the sake of my sanity, please do not do that. Because this is what students look at. They say, hey, squared, I know how to do that. Square that, square that, we're done. No. Instead, what you need to make sure that you do is you need to say, oh, I understand what that squared means. It means I'm multiplying it by itself. And then you'd understand that, hey, i got to do a FOIL method here. You see that? So I would encourage you to rewrite it like that, just so you don't forget. But the other thing then is this is where the second set of brackets are going to come into play because you're going to have at least three terms here, and you're going to have to subtract that group of terms. So it means you're going to have to distribute the negative sign. Right? Or subtract them. Now, I want you to try and do this one on your own. Again, I'm going to do it. I'll freeze the screen. I will do it. Give you some time here to work on it. You can pause the video if you're watching the video. Pause it right now and try this on your own. And then uh, 
we'll finish off with the answers. In the first step of expansion, you want to note a couple things that I did. When I'm multiplying 2y times 3x, you should get in the habit of writing it 6xy. Okay, write it in alphabetical order. If you wrote it 6yx, and then this one you did 6xy, you may miss it. You may think that those are not like terms. So, if you can, get in this habit right away of writing the variables in alphabetical order. Because then you'll, you'll, you won't miss any like terms. Okay, so there's the first stage. Okay, so let's take a look at this question together real quick. Um, the first step here, I multiplied this through and left it here inside the square brackets. The next step, you'll notice that I did, let me see, I did a couple things. The third step, you'll see that I did a couple things, and that would be combining these x terms here, right? I combined those, and then I combined these two like terms right here. Okay. And if you do one or two things at a time, don't do too many things in your head at a time because that's when you start making mistakes. So notice I, I combined you know, this term and this term. That's all I did. Rewrote everything. The next step here is where I distributed this negative. Remember, you're subtracting all of these terms. So that really turns out to be a minus 9 squared. And then this, you're subtracting a positive, so that's minus 12xy. And then you're subtracting another positive, that's minus 4y squared. So I would encourage you to take an extra step and distribute that negative sign. Really, it's the same as multiplying, right? Negative 1 times this. Negative 1 times that. Negative 1 times this one. And that's what you get. So just make sure you remember that. When you subtract, you have to subtract every term inside there. And then finally, gathering like terms should give you this. You may have a different order of things. That's fine. If there's squares and different variables and such like that, don't worry about it. The order does not matter so much. Um, but you know, like I mentioned before, if it's just one variable. But if there's more than one variable, don't worry about it. Okay, so that's the answer to that question.